Okay, so welcome to the just before Christmas edition of our seminar this week. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Paolo. Um, and uh, I mean, he must have been in this business for as long as I am, uh, at least because uh, he's been around for as long as I can remember. Um, and, and so he's, he's always been working in this area of sort of visual languages, um, human computer interaction and, and, and software engineering uh, with graph transformation um, systems. Um, but I have to say that I haven't seen any work on um, uh, agents and, and uh, these check and transform and force processes by him today. So that seems to be a new topic, even if it's probably in the general line of what he's been doing before. Um, so uh, Paolo has been at, 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 at Roma, uh, uh, Sapienza, also for as long as I remember. So <laughs> some, some people have very convoluted um, careers and, and, and CVs, but this is sort of remarkably linear in that respect. Um, uh, and and uh, he's also joined by one of his co-authors, um, Anna, today, who's also a professor there. Um, uh, and who will take the kind of backseat and, and maybe answer the difficult questions, I suppose, if they come up. Um, so, so we're well, well equipped today. So uh, yeah, please, Paolo, go ahead and looking forward to your presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, so yes, this is a new topic. Actually, this is a, um, how can I say, a development of a paper that uh, we presented uh, last year. With has been uh, published in Theoretical Computer Science on uh, a, a compositional uh, and collaborative view of uh, rewriting. So the original, uh, the original model was developed with respect to, to string rewriting, word rewriting. And, uh, but here we generalize to the, a, gener a general view of processes. Uh, as I was saying, and uh, uh, this is all uh, Andrea's fault, because when Andrea asked me if I wanted to give a seminar uh, to Greta two months ago, I was working on this and I said, yeah, sure. I will have a paper out by that time or at least submitted. So no problem. Uh, as things turn out, we have not finished yet because it's, uh, it has really become uh, huge. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm presenting it anyway. Just uh, to, to tell you that this is not this is unpublished material. So far. And I'm uh, joined by my co-author Anna Labella. She was also the author of a previous uh, paper, and uh, she's uh, uh, an expert in category theory. So there is uh, uh, some uh, categorical uh, uh, formalism here. And uh, as you will see, uh, I don't know. yeah, uh, the, the summary is uh, is like this. So. I will uh, introduce uh, some motivation why we think that there is a generality in uh, uh, dynamic processes and uh, rewriting especially, which uh, uh, makes uh, uh, meaningful to uh, regard uh, this distinction between agents and uh, environmental uh, uh, and computational environment. So agents, uh, we call them request guarantee for reasons that we will see in a minute. And, uh, Rules we call them check transfer and force for reasons that will also be clear in a minute. And uh, we have a way of generating rules out of uh, uh, the, the capabilities of an agent. Uh, so we will discuss what the processes of these uh, agents look like when uh, immersed in a computational environment given by a check transfer and force template. We will see that there is a very uh, straightforward generalization extension to uh, communicating QG, QG agents. And then there will be uh, some uh, info on the categorical setting, uh, especially we are looking at uh, the abstract model of all of this as a, a sort of enrichment on by categories and a bilateral enrichment where communication is, uh, is brought in. Uh, this is about graphs, so I will also show you how we can encode the graph transformation in the SPO and DPO versions in, in this formalism, but I will not go into much detail about that and then some conclusions. Okay, so motivations. Uh, so we, we looked at things from a high level perspective. What's in the production? And, uh, 
the equivalent of productions, uh, as we know from graph transformation or from uh, word rewriting, uh, we will call uh, a move. So if we look at the contest reproduction, it says that uh, uh, we, we need to have an antecedent, which is a non-terminal. We need to have a consequent, which is a, a string, as a word in some alphabet. If we look at contest sensitive production, this non-terminal must be embedded in some contest, left and right, and this contest must be found in the uh, in the evolved uh, word, in the transformed word, uh, enclosing the the consequent. For graph production, of course, we uh, I write this in the in the single pushout form, but we know that. It's easy to understand how a double push-out form would be. Uh, so we say that there is a graph, and uh, we must find uh, this graph uh, as a subgraph in the current host graph. And uh, there is another graph that we must find in the transformed graph. And uh, the interpretation is that everything which is not uh, mapped from one graph uh, to the other, from the left one to the right one, uh, must disappear in the in the transformation. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, the the specification of what uh, is uh, a, is the content of uh, of a move. But how are they applied? So the same contest free production could be uh, used in a contest free uh, rewriting relation. So that's you you find uh, your antecedent uh, within a certain um, between two. Um, adjoining uh, subwords, and you substitute uh, the the consequent exactly in the same position. But you can use the same uh, exactly the same rule uh, in your production in uh, a contest of regulated rewriting, where you put uh, conditions, uh, which might be that uh, there is a certain subword in the in the original word. So. Uh, contextual uh, conditions for applying uh, this uh, this production, and there might be also contextual uh, conditions on what has to come out of this production. So maybe you do not accept uh, this uh, rewriting if it would form uh, some uh, forbidden word. And for graph transformation, of course, we know that exactly the same rule uh, properly uh, written uh, can be used in a, a, an SPO or in a DPO. Uh, way. So the main idea is that to take this distinction between what is specified uh, as uh, the production and what is uh, the, the context of its application, to take this distinction seriously. And so we think that moves define a local invariance for application, and uh, this uh, invariance can be stated like this. There are requests about the state of affairs before application, and guarantees on the state of affairs after application. So if I apply this, uh, this production, I'm sure that uh, when I, before applying, there was this non-terminal B, and after applying, there will be uh, this uh, non-terminal, this uh, subword uh, beta. But if I can apply it or not, is beyond what the, the production itself can specify. So we have rules which define global properties of states of affairs, like uh, we showed in the, in the regulated writing or uh, as happens uh, for, uh, for double push out. So the, you must check some uh, global property uh, before applying, and you must enforce in a specific way the effect uh, of an application. Again, to make uh, uh, an example on um, on uh, uh, contest reproduction. Contest reproduction could also be applied in parallel. A certain number of it could be applied in parallel. Or, uh, for, or for example, you say, yeah, I take this production and I apply it on all instances of an of a antecedent at the same time. So the rule uh, which defines how to, enforce, to, the, to apply the rule uh, specifies which in fact must be, uh, must be enforced. And, uh, we assume that the properties you had to check include the presence of the requested parts and the properties that you have to enforce include the presence of the guaranteed part. Another thing that we can observe is that the, this environment is the same. It prescribes the same kind of, let's call it substitution for all homogeneous moves. 
So if I take uh, two different uh, uh, contest reproductions, well, I can abstract from their uh, specific content and uh, I can say, well, there is something which is requested and this uh, something will be a non-terminal and we, there is something which will be guaranteed and uh, this uh, something must be uh, a word. So basically what I'm saying is that uh, you look uh, uh, at uh, the current word, you find an instance of the requested part and uh, it has to be adjoined by uh, its uh, left and uh, right uh, uh, subwords to complete the original word. And then what you, what you do is uh, to insert in the place of what was requested, what is guaranteed while preserving the adjoining, the adjoining code. So this is the checked part. You check for the presence of the request and you, this is the enforced part. You enforce the presence of the guarantee part. And the same can be said for the contest-sensitive case. In this case, it might be interesting to look that uh, I'm not just writing uh, uh, this, uh, the contest sensitive production in the usual way. But uh, what I'm saying is that uh, the requested part is actually made of three parts, the, the non-terminal, the left contest, and the uh, right contest. And uh, again, the guaranteed uh, uh, condition, the guaranteed elements uh, are also three parts. So the the word which is really rewritten and the left and uh, right contest, which must be uh, preserved. So I, the preservation is, uh, is put by saying that the GT2 is equal to RT2 and GT3 is equal to RT3. And uh, this is the same structure for this. So the general, the general uh, uh, way of expressing this is uh, I have my Y1 and Y2 variable parts then I must find the requested part uh, that I put in second position, the requested part that I put in first position, and the requested part that I put in third position, and the same for the guaranteed part. So this is the, the idea. So we try to achieve uh, uh, um, homogeneity in, uh, in this sense. So we gave uh, this general model where we have request guarantee moves, check transfer and force rules that uh, uh, apply moves, and check transfer enforced patterns, which generate the check transfer enforced rules and they specialize to the moves that they have to uh, be applied. So the, uh, we looked for a, a global a common framework in which to express this kind of homogeneity. And we turned to many sorted term uh, algebras. Uh, the, the peculiarity that we ask of, of this algebra is that they are algebras of finite objects. So every uh, applicative domain will be encoded in the form of uh, some, uh, some object. Uh, also, we require that there are two designated sources in these algebras. So one, I say, for the global state of affairs, so the current state of the, of the word and the how it will have to be transformed. And uh, SU, which is uh, domain dependent. So uh, you know, each domain will say, okay, what I'm really dealing with are words. And uh, uh, that will mean that the state of affairs will be a state constructed on the word. So these are, uh, there must be two, work, two sorts of this type and then all the rest of the domain uh, depends on what it is. And also we have a two designated constructors. So state, as I mentioned, will bring the domain dependent uh, nucleus of a, core, of a state of affairs and uh, encase it in a term with a constructor state. And uh, uh, for the SU domain dependent uh, sort, there will be a designated constructor which uh, represents the way in which you construct this. Uh, I will also have a special, um, a special uh, constant of uh, SU sort, uh, which is this box times. And basically it uh, means that uh, the agent is not involved in any process. So the state, state of box times means that there's nothing happening with this agent. Okay, so how do we define moves? So we have, uh, we use a finite alphabet uh, uh, of triggers and a trigger indicate that uh, uh, the, the agent is ready to execute a move of, uh, of um, a given kind. 
uh, there will be three special triggers that will be used for special uh, purposes. Otherwise, there can be specific kinds of trigger for specific kinds of move. And in this in this presentation, I will all I will use the exclamation mark to indicate the red address to execute the production. So a move is basically formed of four components. There is the trigger. This is a, a tuple of requested terms. So the the, the things we saw for uh, contest-free or contest-sensitive production, it will be a tuple and a tuple of guaranteed terms. And they, they might also have a different uh, cardinality. And then there is a set of uh, variables which uh, are present uh, in the requested terms because we use terms uh, which might have uh, variables and they will need to be transferred. And this is a sort of local transfer. Uh, when uh, we go and apply the, the whole thing. So for example, I can encode, uh, uh, sorry, this, uh, this should be an exclamation mark. I can encode uh, this uh, rule uh, by saying that in the first uh, tuple, there is a, a, a term which represents a non-terminal and uh, in the second tuple, there is the term uh, which represents the, the, the consequent. And the same for uh, the, um, for contest free production, I will have a triple uh, in this case. And uh, the, the elements in these uh, tuples must have uh, specific sorts. So they, they, they have to be constructed all in, in the same way. There will, there all, will always all be an move, identity move using the equal uh, uh, trigger. And so we, here you see the, the constructor for the base uh, uh, sort. So CU of X1 and CU of X1 and X1 is, tra is, uh, is transferred. So I will uh, instantiate X1 uh, with something which depends on the current uh, state. And I will uh, just uh, copy it to the, to the enforced state. So what is a check transfer and force rule? So now we have uh, the algebra in which we have defined the moves. Uh, we uh, must have an equational theory with uh, some actions. And we have a language of formula. So for example, uh, for words, uh, we will have axioms on concatenation and uh, the, the condition of the null word. And in the language, uh, we will have a uh, word equations that we connect is uh, uh, and or and so on. And uh, so a rule is written like this. It has a name, which uh, usually uh, takes after the name of the move. It has the, the, the checking part, it has the enforcing part, and in the middle, it has this delta, which represents the set of, uh, of uh, variables which must be, uh, of which appear freely in, P, in pi C and appear freely in pi E and must be transferred between the two. So the evaluations that you obtain for, um, for uh, the free variables uh, in, uh, in pi C in the substitution must be transfer to provide evaluations for the same variables in, uh, in pi. Um, this set uh, will, uh, uh, will include the set of locally transferred variables from, from the move uh, for which the, the rule has been generated. So basically, we specify for each uh, uh, rule, for each move, the way in which has, uh, uh, it has to be applied. So for example, uh, this is the way of applying the first uh, uh, contest reproduction. I say the state of affairs before the application is represented as state of YC, and YC is a designated variable for this, and YC uh, is, uh, must equal this, uh, this term. Uh, there's a word formed with uh, y1 and y2, these are variables, and in the middle, you must have exactly that non-terminal b. Uh, you will transfer the evaluation for uh, y1 and y2, and so the state of affairs after the application will be represented by state on a certain uh, on a variable uh, ye, and ye will be uh, e stands for enforce. So we enforce the, the new state to be constructed uh, like this. And there is a unique way in which this, uh, uh, this uh, state can, uh, can be enforced. And the same for, uh, for the second, uh, second production. So what uh, does it mean to, uh, to apply uh, this uh, 
move with uh, rule on the state. So we say that uh, SOAB, we, we first uh, um, use this substitution. So suppose that uh, the, the current state is a state uh, or word to be concatenated with D, where B and D are uh, um, encoding the terms encoding the, the respective non-terminal. So this is the first substitution that, uh, that you make. And then uh, you must uh, then uh, use this uh, substitution word uh, uh, YC must be substituted with word BD and Y1 and Y2 must be substituted. Sorry, this is, uh, uh, yeah. Y1 is substituted with, e, with, with a null word and Y2 is substituted with D because we choose to apply the production for re rewriting B. So now we transfer the valuations of uh, Y1, Y2. And uh, so we are, what happens is that uh, uh, Ye will have a word, Y1 is uh, epsilon, it's a null word. So we go directly to beta and then uh, Y2 has been substituted with D and we get this. And so we enforce the new state to be uh, word, state or word of, of B concatenated with D. Uh, so this is um, uh, this is a, a representation of what's going on, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to into detail. But basically, uh, it is uh, what uh, what I mentioned. So the, this delta means that the, um, this nabla means that the, uh, valuations from the, uh, the, the variables in the tuple are in the requested tuples must be transferred to the same variables in the requested, in the guaranteed tuple. And this, the rest is the transferred through the, this delta, okay. Another thing to notice is that rules might, might compete for, uh, for application. So in that state, I could uh, apply the, the other rule, the one which takes D and uh, uh, replaces it with delta. And of course, that means, fundamentally means that the substitutions I make are different. Y1 is uh, substituted uh, with for B, and uh, uh, so B is substituted for Y1 and epsilon for uh, Y2, and then I obtain this. And of course, since uh, these are uh, contest-free productions, I can choose the order in, in which uh, in which to apply. So, in a sense, the selection of a rule to apply is a formal choice non-determinism. And uh, in, in this model, there is also a form of external non-determinism, but I will not uh, treat them here. Since uh, the, the, uh, this, um, this is a contest-free application, we have a sort of convergence. We can apply things in the, in the same order, but this is not true in general. So we, we need, to, it's hard to say in, in, without looking at the specific uh, actions, whether something is convergent or uh, the other thing is that uh, since we have seen that there is a general form of rule for moves, uh, basically what we can uh, we can do is uh, to extract uh, the, this uh, the structure. And so, for example, what we know is that uh, we will have to check uh, the presence of the first uh, instance, uh, the first term in the tuple of the requested uh, terms, and uh, we will uh, enforce the presence of the first. Uh, element in the tuple for the guaranteed terms. Whereas for a contest sensitive, we must uh, uh, obtain from the, uh, from the tuple of requested terms also the second uh, element and the third element and place them in the, in the correct position and the same for the guaranteed terms. So this is a, a template. So that means fundamentally that you can take this template, you substitute the elements which uh, are uh, in the tuple of guaranteed and requested terms, uh, these variables uh, will always be there in each, uh, in each rule, and then you obtain an instantiated form of, uh, of this. Uh, of this. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, in order for uh, this to be, to be uh, uh, practical, we must ensure that the source of, uh, of the terms in the tuples are the correct one. So in the, in the requested uh, the tuple, we must find a non-terminal. In the enforced uh, tuple, we must find uh, a, a word. Or in the context-sensitive case, in the second, in the first uh, um, element of the requested tuple, we must find a non-terminal. And in the other two, 
we must find uh, a work. So we have a way of instantiating, of instantiating uh, check transfer, uh, check transfer and force uh, rules uh, from this check transfer and force pattern. And uh, that's the way I described it. So we can talk of the set of the uh, uh, rules that we can derive uh, from a pattern fundamental. Now processes. Uh, so processes, uh, we have the agent. The agent has its uh, domain on which the states are, are formed and uh, with, that, with that all the algebra behind. And it has a set of moves. We, uh, these moves can be immersed in the computational framework if they are of the requested form. And so we can generate a set of uh, uh, rules of, out, of this, uh, out of this framework. And now we can define processes. So a process in, uh, in uh, uh, this agent, according to a specific set of check transfer and force rules, uh, is given by a sequence of pairs, where the first uh, element uh, gives you the name of a rule which was applied, and the second element gives you the, uh, the substitution mapping which uh, was used to, uh, in the application. So we can... Uh, um, <clears throat> We can uh, extract uh, the first, the trace of the first components, the trace of the second components of the substitutions, and we uh, can extract the sequence of states that uh, have been uh, traversed. And fundamentally, what we are asking is that uh, if you enforce uh, something at, uh, at a certain step, what you check is exactly that step at the, uh, at the state at the next step. So the, the the states form a sequence where each, transfer, each application transforms the state, uh, checks the state, transforms it uh, by enforcing something, and the next uh, CTE which must be used must uh, check uh, that one. So we can establish uh, some generational relations. So what uh, does a, 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 a rule do is uh, to transform a state into another, and the, whole process will uh, take a, a starting state and uh, uh, arrive at a, an end state. Uh, computations are special processes uh, which uh, start by saying there, there was nothing and now there is uh, this specific state from which you have to start. And close computations end with uh, some uh, condition. If you have reached a certain, a certain state, then you can close uh, and uh, uh, modify the state so that uh, we know that it is closed. So there, there is an example here for contest free, the, the starting part, uh, the starting uh, rule must be something which says, okay, now we start uh, with a, a starting symbol with a non-terminal, uh, with a term which encodes the non-terminal star symbol of a, of a grammar. And uh, the end is that when you reach a state where the uh, way one, so the, basically your word is all formed of terminals, so there is no more uh, rule to apply, then you mark this fact by putting a dagger at the end of this. And of course, you can check the encoding and say, well, if uh, uh, my model transforms a word uh, omega one into a word omega two, then uh, the, if the, the encoding of, uh, of the grammar is correct. And uh, the, uh, if a encoding of the grammar is correct, then the, that uh, corresponds uh, to a step in the generation relation in the grammar. And if I can uh, close a computation, then uh, what I obtain in the end uh, is the, an encoding of a word which is in the language of, uh, of the grammar. Uh, and of course, this uh, is uh, the correctness of this encoding has to be proved, uh, and uh, uh, well, it, it has been proved <laughs> in the paper. I'm not showing it. Okay, uh, I, I, how am I doing with time, by the way? Well, it's uh, just half an hour gone now. Okay. So. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so we can extend uh, this model to communicating Q uh, agents. So fundamentally, we take a, a normal QC, QG agent and we add uh, some uh, communication infrastructure. 
And this uh, infrastructure is modeled as a pair of channels, the input and output channels, and this is modeled as a pair of uh, alphabet. And so the, the, the only difference uh, with respect to normal agents is that the, the, the set of triggers is structured in a particular way. So there is a, a set of uh, autonomous triggers, let's say, that uh, uh, model an autonomous capability of triggering. And then there are the two alphabets uh, which, uh, uh, of the symbols, messages, which can pass uh, on, on the channels. And the idea is that uh, one, thing, one agent to put something on its output channel and the other one will receive it on its uh, input channel. There is a special symbol which represents either the fact that the, one of the agents has nothing to communicate or uh, uh, that uh, uh, there, there might be a distinction. So I might be able to understand only certain messages that the other one is, uh, is emitting. So if this is the case uh, that uh, I, I receive a message that I'm not able to understand what it means, then I have uh, this uh, symbol to represent this fact. So uh, other than this, the CQG agents are, are QG agents uh, on, constructed on uh, this, uh, on this uh, alphabet. So I can pair two agents. Uh, so each has its uh, own uh, uh, set of moves. Uh, I, I just put this override to indicate that this is the communicating one. I can pair two agents if uh, they have uh, at least uh, something to communicate. So at least the one of the two must be able to communicate to understand something that the other one is communicating. If, uh, if it is both ways, then we can say that they are peer. If it is uh, only one way, then we can say that the pair uh, gamma of HL, HR agents uh, is totally steered by one of the, of the two. Conventionally, we, uh, we say that the left one uh, totally steers the, the pair. So processes, basically, what are they? They are pairs, uh, processes of a pair of the system are pairs of processes of the, of the individual systems. But we, uh, we need to, um, to synchronize these two processes. And how do we, do we synchronize them? Uh, we synchronize uh, with the fact that uh, the input so let's let's look at this. So consider the left uh, agent and uh, its input channel at step i. Uh, its content must be equal to what the uh, right uh, agent put on its output channel, the two, at, at uh, step i minus one, at the previous step. Or it's uh, it's uh, the it's this symbol. Uh, which indicates that uh, the, the, the right agent uh, could send something, but the left agent is not able uh, to, to communicate, to understand it. But they are synchronized on this, uh, on this one. And vice versa, for the, the right agent, uh, we'll receive something that the left agent has left out at, uh, at the previous step. So it's a, it's a very simple form of synchronization, but it's... Uh, is uh, quite powerful. So uh, this is the paper where we started the uh, reasoning on this. And uh, the idea was that uh, we could uh, associate uh, a controller. So if you want to do regulated rewriting, or if you want to do uh, rewriting with a, with a control word, uh, this can be represented by the fact that you have a controller, which is another kind of agent. And uh, this, uh, this controller in its output channel will tell uh, the writer what to use, what to, basically it will say, well, you now have to uh, apply a move where uh, you have a, a non-terminal B and you transform it uh, to a, a, a word better. And of course, the, the, uh, the writer agent will be able to receive exactly this kind of messages and in this case, it will not send out uh, anything. In this paper, uh, we devise some more uh, sophisticated form of, of uh, communication where the writer said uh, something has gone wrong or uh, I, I could apply the, the move. But uh, for this purpose, it's not, 
is not necessary. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm not going uh, into detail of this, but uh, the idea is that, uh, uh, it, it, the idea is uh, quite simple that uh, you, uh, let, let's put it here. So the controller has a multi-set of acting on terminals. So it assumes that uh, the word of a writer contains uh, a certain number of uh, instances uh, of occurrences of those non-terminals. So it encodes the peric vector in the form of a multiset. And every time uh, it prescribes a move, it assumes that this move uh, will have success. So it can calculate uh, how the peric vector will, uh, will, uh, will, uh, will change. So basically it will uh, remove an occurrence of B and it will add uh, occurrences of, our, of all the known terminals present in, uh, in the word that it has prescribed to apply. And uh, the rewriter is, is basically the same as, as we saw, except that it will receive this different kind of, of triggers. And then once again, uh, we can say, okay, this uh, synchronization goes well uh, if uh, the left hand side so if uh, if a controller uh, performs a, a, a process which starts with a multiset where only one instance of s is present and then with its end but in this case it uh, means it has uh, reached the empty multiset and uh, in the, and it will uh, mark the fact that it has ended by placing the dagger uh, one occurrence of the dagger in the multiset. So it was an empty multiset, now it's a multiset with a dagger, but uh, there is no rule which can be applied to this. And the, the, the end for the rewriter and the start for the rewriter is the same as, as before. Okay, so this is the, the idea behind the, the calculus. Now for uh, the categorical setting, we looked at, uh, and, and this is the, the the field of my colleague, so I'm talking, but if there are some things which are not clear, she can intervene. So fundamentally, we looked at bicategories and we looked at uh, enrichment on uh, bicategories. So bicategories are normal categories, they have a set of objects, they have a set of morphisms, but they also have a, a, a relation. In this case, I just put uh, a, a partial order relation uh, between morphisms. So you can uh, more or less uh, structure the, the, set, uh, the set of morphisms. And uh, enriching in this, uh, in a big category or in a category, in this case, it's a big category, uh, means that uh, you take a, a set of objects and, uh, uh, and in our case, it will be the set of states of affairs and you find a function which associates with each object uh, in your, uh, uh, let's call it Q uh, word, uh, an object of this uh, category, of your base uh, category. And, and then you must uh, be able to uh, relate two objects in, uh, in uh, so two state of affairs to a morphism in the by category. So, uh, uh, okay, so in, the, in our case, each, uh, uh, each uh, pattern, uh, so each set of templates, uh, each set of, uh, of templates, uh, we, can find, we can define which are the checking formulas that uh, can be generated from this and which are the enforced uh, formula. So fundamentally, uh, what we are saying is that a state of affairs is characterized by the set of formulae it can satisfy. Paolo, you Paolo, yeah. before, you, before you go into those, those further details, just to confirm that, that yeah. I think I got this right. So, sure. so, so what you're saying is this by category, the arrows in the by category are your states. Uh, the states are the arrows in the by category and the, the two cells are the rules or the, 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 the moves. Is that correct? Mm. Not exactly, I think. Not exactly, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I can show you a picture. So let's see if uh, yeah. the picture is. Uh, so here is the, the space of my, what? Yeah. Okay, so the, on top, uh, you find the space of my, uh, 
of my agent. So you, you, these uh, objects are state of affairs, but this is not, these are not objects in a category. These are, this is a set of, uh, of objects. And uh, with each state of affairs, uh, you, uh, uh, you find the corresponding object in uh, the base category, which I have constructed like this. And which is the object that, uh, that uh, I, I associate? Is, <clears throat> is the object formed by all the formula or the checking and enforcing formula that are satisfied with the proper substitutions by this state of affairs? Okay. So uh, uh, um, an object here is a collection of formula. Uh, it's structured in a certain way, but it's a collection of formula. And I map uh, an object of the state, a state of affairs of the, uh, of the agent, which gives me my set OBG, OBQ, uh, to an object here. And uh, which, uh, which is this object is the maximum set of formula which are satisfied by the state. And here I have processes. So they are not necessarily morphisms. I, processes which allow me to go from one, one state uh, to another. And uh, this corresponds uh, to a set of, uh, to a morphism, which is a set of uh, objects. And I will show you how these objects are constructed, which are the morphism in the base category. And uh, for each pair of, uh, uh, of objects here, I can find which is the morphism which relates the, the, the image of this, uh, of this one. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, if maybe Anna wants to say something. Uh, and so uh, maybe I, I will show you here. So suppose that uh, you have, uh, so the objects in the base category are uh, these pairs of formula. Pairs of uh, uh, this is a set of enforcing formula. This is a set of checking formulas, and this must be jointly satisfiable. Uh, if I take uh, two objects here, then uh, uh, there is a set of uh, pairs uh, done with the checking uh, formula and uh, enforcing formula between these two objects, so B one and B two. The checking formula is taken from uh, the omega c of the uh, OB one. And the enforcing formula is taken from the omega, sorry, this, this is an error, omega 2e, uh, this, uh, this one of, uh, of, uh, of the other object. So fundamentally, if you put uh, these two objects, uh, you're saying that uh, the checking part of, uh, of the source uh, will uh, relate to the enforcing part of the, of the target. Okay. And if you think about it, this is what happens uh, when, you're, when you're doing the process. So you, you, you start from, uh, uh, from a state, uh, you check and you enforce. And the next one will attach to the, to the things that you have enforced and check it. And if it checks, then you can go on. So fundamentally, that means that these two pairs, you will retrieve as uh, the, uh, sorry, these two formula, you will retrieve as checking and enforcing formula in a rule that you have applied for going from something which is mapped into OB1 to something which is mapped into OB2. Okay. And, if, and the morphisms are basically built with all the possible uh, pairs that you can construct in, in this one. So you, you concatenate this, uh, this thing. And what happens, and two cells are given by two. And two, two, what happens is that the, the state of affairs, the, the domain on which you define the state of affairs for the agents is mapped into these, uh, into these objects. Uh, this function gives you the maximal pair of sets of formula jointly satisfied by this, uh, by this uh, element. So when the state is that one. And then you, you construct a set of chains uh, uh, taken in, uh, in that way, which allow you to pass from, uh, from one to another. And they correspond to processes. This is a partial specification of the state of affairs. Yeah, it's a sort of specification of the state of affairs. Uh, if you have a two, if you have a system of communicating agents, basically what you're doing is that uh, 
you project uh, your states. So basically you have pairs of states here and you project them uh, on the left component or on the right component. So you have uh, constructed two enrichments. So you have two, two base categories and you enrich simultaneously on, uh, on both of them, but uh, you need to have a correspondence between the morphisms. So if you are related these two objects here, you get uh, this set of morphisms. If you relate to these two objects here, sorry, uh, you obtain these other sets of morphisms and you must be able to relate the morphism that is here, uh, the morphisms that are here in the morphisms that are here. To relate the, um, the computation on the left side with the exactly. computation on the right side. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, this relation is the, the morphism uh, in the top level. So you, you have these processes here, they are reflected in this way on the left category, they are reflected in this way on the right category, but there is a, a, a relation between uh, the, the two reflections, so to speak. Uh, okay, so fundamentally, these are the, the bricks of our approach, and there are a number of results. So there are results which regard the, the computational model. So for example, uh, if you have a partial order on agents that we have defined in terms of the subsetting of moves, then you have a partial order on the process. So the one with fewer moves can do fewer things in a sense. And there is a version for systems of paired agents. Interestingly, it, it comes out, uh, which is uh, reasonable, that communication restricts the behavior of an agent. So if you are paired with another agent, you cannot longer do whatever you want you, with your moves. You have to uh, listen to what the other is saying and say, well, then it means that I can only apply this move or this subset of moves. Uh, this uh, notion of um, CQG agent, when uh, you have uh, the left uh, agent, which totally steals the computation, so the, it forces uh, one move at a time in, uh, uh, in the right agent, then it basically means that you can substitute the, the two right agents. So it doesn't really matter what uh, you are using as a right agent. And uh, finally, a system of paired CQG agents can be emulated by single uh, CQG agents. I have not shown this, but uh, it, it, it's, uh, quite, uh, it's uh, quite interesting. So if you have a pair and there is a, a single agent which is able to Basically, you take the Cartesian and it's able to uh, do uh, processes which uh, emulate the synchronization of the individual processes. We have a result for uh, the categories. Of course, we have uh, provided the construction of how to move from, uh, uh, from a set of templates and an agent to by category and uh, enrichment. And uh, this is the equivalent. So this is uh, the, the, the result that I put here in, uh, in bold uh, about system of pair CQ agents is uh, uh, a, 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 an instance of a, this more general result in the world of uh, uh, categories. So bilateral enrichment in a bicategory provided that there is some condition on the category as a natural line isomorphism on a single enrichment for the same set of so fundamentally, you can take this uh, bilateral enrichment and have uh, uh, an agent which, uh, uh, which is uh, enriched on, on a specific category. Uh, we also have uh, worked uh, with changes basis. I have no time to, to show this. Uh, what is important is that uh, in this way, you can show how uh, a specific calculus uh, can uh, be uh, mapped to a different calculus. So for example, we, we might find out that uh, uh, given the rewriter, we can construct, so given uh, your, uh, your grammar, you can construct the, the, the rewriter, which applies the moves uh, which are the productions of the grammar, but you can also construct the, um, the controller, which uh, uh, works on multiset. And basically there is a cor strict correspondence between, between the two. Then uh, we have uh, applied this to several types of processes. We're rewriting, set rewriting, in particular reaction systems on which we have worked uh, uh, independently. 
uh, control rewriting, I mentioned, uh, communicating, uh, so control rewriting is a kind of communication, uh, communicating reaction system in different forms. This is a topic of, a, of another paper. We showed how to uh, have a, a reaction system, networks of reaction systems and reaction system with influence on the virus. And uh, we have encoded graph transformation in this SPO and DPO version. And we have encoded the calculus of uh, communicating systems uh, without hiding and relabeling. It uh, should be possible to do it also in, uh, in that case. So there is a, a bunch of things which tells us that uh, uh, this, more, this computational model is quite general and is quite applicable. Well, I promised something about graphs, but uh, actually uh, it's, uh, it's a bit uh, complicated. I, I just want to show you the, the, uh, the idea is that uh, a graph will be represented with uh, two, will be encoded with two um, terms that are a set of terms. One set represents nodes and one set represents edges. And you, they must be uh, well-formed in some way. And uh, uh, and uh, the moves, uh, what what the moves do is basically to say, okay, there is this a set of nodes, there is this set of edges. Some of these are deleted, some of them are preserved, and some are created new. And uh, the, the real difficulty is how to express what uh, what you are creating. Uh, so we uh, we have a, a template for this, but I'm not going to to go into detail uh, with it. The interesting thing is that we can map uh, both of the template for SPO, we can the template for GTO, for D DPO. And uh, the, the resulting encodings, uh, actually we can have a change of pace. So we can transform uh, the rules uh, for one into the rules uh, for, uh, for the other in a standard way, which doesn't uh, still mean that they are the same but that there is uh, some, uh, some standard construction. When the processes they, they can perform are different, of course, but this is just uh, at the level of a, of a syntax in a sense. So in conclusion, we have presented a new model of computation based on the distinction between specification of an agent's capabilities and constraints given by uh, agent's capabilities and constraints given by computational execution frames. It, it, uh, we have proved uh, that it is able to encode several known models, uh, only given uh, two today. Uh, the notion of communication smoothly integrated in the framework for pairs of agents so far, and it's nicely mapped uh, to categorical construction, which uh, also provides some insight on relation between different uh, computational models through this notion of change of pace. Future work, a uh, lot to do, not, not in the, in the upcoming paper, but for real future work, explore expressive power. So what can we really express uh, with this? And um, uh, probably it's, uh, it's not a Turing complete, which is not necessarily bad. Explore complexity, uh, probably depending on the actions. So the, the, the actual equational theory that you're using. Integrate application conditions. So negative application conditions should be easy. It basically means uh, adding a new tuple and use that tuple of, to express the negations that you can express in the formula. A general application conditions is probably more tricky uh, if, uh, if there is no bound uh, on, uh, on the nested because we need to know how many things are uh, which are requested, how many things which are guaranteed. So this might be tricky. A standard communication model. So far, we can only deal with pairs of agents. So maybe networks, maybe some form of communication through the environment as in shared memory could be explored. Uh, are there relations with categorical models and specifications? So uh, we, we, we have this uh, general idea of enrichment on by categories and uh, possibly bilaterally. But uh, what if uh, there is a, a specific uh, uh, categorical uh, framework with push out, pullbacks. So we, this, uh, this do not have push out, but this do not have pullback. So uh, how can uh, we relate to existing? And last but not least, implementation. Because uh, of course, uh, 
you need to be able to, to integrate equational theories, you need to be able to uh, unify and provide uh, transfer substitutions. So there, there is a, it's a complex uh, implementation, but uh, we think that the, the, the theory, the underlying theory is, uh, is more or less clean. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Questions and uh, since I might uh, forget uh, in the end, merry festivities and a happy new year. Excellent, thank you very much, Manu. Um, yeah, very interesting. So I'm, I'm, I have a couple of questions. Maybe some others will have as well. But, but um, um, maybe, maybe the simple one first. Um, mm -hmm. on, your, on your last slide, you said uh, it may not be Turing complete, but then you showed how you encode graph rewriting. And as far as I remember, DPO should be Turing complete. Uh, yeah, we, we, that uh, well, is it? Wait, is it? Yeah, I think so. DPO, yes, SPO, not as far as I remember, uh, because the dangling condition has some some expressive power, basically mm. that you that you that you lack otherwise. I I, I really don't know. Uh, because I've not uh, given much uh, thought. My, my impression is, was that uh, I could not uh, uh, I could not encode some um, some problem which would uh, would come out uh, if it uh, if it is Turing complete. But uh, mm -hmm. really, I, it's just a, a wild um, a wild assumption. I've, I've not uh, given any thought. But I will. I, what I could, could do is to to look at the demonstration that DPO is uh, Turing complete and see what uh, uh, what works and what uh, and what breaks in our case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not entirely sure what the best reference is. Uh, I, I think I, I remember Detlef and and uh, Detlef. Um, yeah, but, but what they Harvey showed. Uh, what, what, well, I, I remember a, a paper by Detlef where he encoded the post correspondence problem. But uh, uh, what I'm thinking is that I cannot encode the post correspondence problem. But uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's something that I have paid uh, five minutes of attention no more than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yes, I had in mind that, uh, that thing there. OK, OK. Right. Uh, the other it's question. Smart. The other question I had, uh, it's just, it's just a slightly maybe more general one. So on the categorical model. So, um, right. So let, let me just see if I understand this correctly. So this, the, the, the arrows in your, in your bike categories um, are computations. That's what you said, right? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they... Chance of moves. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sequences of, of, of of moves or root applications. I, I would say they, they mean it. Actually, yeah, they are set of chains, not just one chain. Maybe the singleton of one chain, maybe they are um, a bag of, of okay, chains. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So, so what, what I, one, we are one, seeing one, there one is morphism. that they mimic computations. They're not oh, yeah. okay. uh, immediately. So one morphism represents a set of computations, basically. Yeah. yeah. Going from a set of affairs to another set of affairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Um, and then obviously you have the the, the subset um, the relation as a as a um, as, as, as as two cells. Uh, two cells between. are just inclusion between, uh, yeah. between sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. They are um, locally possessed by categories, not ge uh, not general by categories. Yeah. So what so what I was wondering is why why are these. Uh, um, I mean, or maybe are, maybe they are, but <laughs> why are they not just two categories? Why do you need bi categories for that, or are they also two? Because categories? They usually the, the the theory of reached categories is made, is made on big bi categories or monoidal categories. Okay. They are okay. the immediate generalization of monoidal categories. Okay, but there isn't. I mean, but in this in particular fact, case, you have a two category, right? As well. Yes, but uh, with two categories, but the. Being possessed to cut possessed by category, they are almost the same as two categories. Mm -hmm. okay. Because in the case, the isomorphisms are just equations. Okay. Because if something is less or equal to another on both sides, they are equal. Mm. 
I guess the question is whether you have strict, um, strictly associative composition of, 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 of the arrows. So if you don't, then, then obviously you need a bicategory. So I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. trying to understand what, I mean, what your notion of composition of... of, um, of bicategories in general composition is uh, up to an isomorphism. Yeah, exactly. You commute up to, but in this case, isomorphism is an equation. So oh, they are equal. Okay, okay. All so right. they are strict, in, in fact. Okay, okay, I see. All right. Okay. But the theory of rich the categories is made on by categories because they are the generalization of monoidal categories. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so then I, I guess yeah, the only other question is that, I mean, I, I'm familiar with models um, where sort of categorical models of computation where the arrows represent individual computation and then obviously mm -hmm. composition is composition of these computations. So what is the motivation here for taking arrows to represent sets of computations rather than single computations? Because we are late to, to this kind of formalization quite naturally, it works. <laughs> <laughs> Just this, this motivation. But does it have to do with the, the, the I don't know, the non-determinism of the, of yeah, the uh, framework actually, that you... Yeah, actually, I didn't mention because the non-determinism comes out in the example of reaction systems. But uh, to, to explain that, uh, I should give uh, too much background on reaction systems, whereas the context re rewriting is. And in the, in the enforcing part uh, of... Um, of uh, uh, encoding a reaction system, you actually have a non determinism. Mm -hmm. So that uh, you need to capture that. Okay, okay. And for example, also in another uh, formalization we made about uh, CCS uh, processes, mm -hmm. the, 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 the arrows between two states were, was not, were not a single computation, but the tree of computation between the two. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is the way the, the, the things work. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that I can, all right, so yeah, okay, so in that sense, I understand, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there may be sets that all start with the same state in principle. So if you think of computation trees basically as arrows, mm -hmm. then uh, which makes sense, then, then, then you would, I mean, they would all start with, the, the tree would start with a single state, so you have to mm -hmm. root. But then yes. it branches out, so so they're not just any sets. So sets going to... from one state to another state, you have a, a tree, yeah. so a, a set of computation. In that case, with the non-determinism, which is, is uh, correspond to I mean, uh, branching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then you want. To, okay, so then yeah, right. If you want, if you want that in one arrow, then you have. I mean, yeah, either a tree or or a set. Or, or something, something, something more complicated than, 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 than a sequence. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, but, by the way, Raiko, uh, the, the, the reason why it, so there is a trick that I didn't mention in the encoding of uh, of graph transformation, and that's possibly why we we have that, that kind of limitation, because uh, I'm not uh, really dealing with graphs. I'm dealing with graphs with uh, identifiers. So that node will be called the node number 12 for the whole existence. So the, the up to isomorphism breaks down there. So it's, uh, it's, it's not exactly DPO, it's an encoding or DPO, which uh, in, in this context. Okay, okay. So does it mean that you're, that you're working with a fixed set of nodes? No, it doesn't have to be. There is a, there is a way in which I, I uh, it, it's too complicated. <laughs> uh, it really, it's expressed in the paper in an appendix because really it's ten, yeah, like yeah, 10 yeah. pages. But uh, the, the idea is that uh, I use, since I use variables, then uh, I use, uh, um, if, I, if you want to, I can show, but fundamentally I can always look at what is the maximum value for an identifier in the current uh, graph. Yeah. And then I create fresh identifiers for the new nodes yeah, and the new yeah, edges, yeah. and I have a way to do that. And there's no limit uh, to, the, to the number of nodes. You have a sort of deterministic way of creating the new identifiers, therefore it's a sort of a deterministic DPO? It, 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 it's sort of deterministic because uh, uh, in the guaranteed part, I 
so, so maybe I, if I show the if I show the um, the thing again, just disappear. But right, it's tricky because uh, I really spent a lot of time understanding how to how to deal with this because of the um, uh, presentation. Excuse me, Paolo. Before we do that, uh, so mm -hmm. we're sort of get, getting into those minor technical details now. So I would suggest that we close the official part of the okay. seminar now. Okay. Which we switch off the YouTube channel, um, and then we can discuss this among ourselves in 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 in, in, in private. Okay. Yeah, sure. So so let me just say thank you again for the for the nice presentation uh, to you and and to 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 Anna for for joining and helping us with the with the category theory here and and everyone else for for, for participating of course um and i uh, i i have to do a little bit of self advertisement here because my next our next seminar is on the 14th of january and uh, it, it will be a tutorial on graph transformation for software engineering which will be given by myself <laughs> so, so so that's the advertisement for the next session so thank you very much and have a good christmas everyone and um uh, we go um, private now but we can stay here so yes uh, before i also have an advertisement to do okay please because the the call for papers for uh, visual languages and human centering computing is open and uh, the deadline is uh, sometime in march so it would be very nice to have um, uh, contributions from the graph transformation community there <laughs>